I tried to learn uh, neural networks by just sort of watching online things and everything. I, and, and I can learn that way, but this is way more fun. All right, so we're here with Ed, um, and he has a neural network-based uh, robotic car that he's going to tell us about. Yeah, this is um, this is a, uh, a donkey car. So um, Adam and Will uh, are the actual inventors of this. I'm just sort of like found they. I I went to a talk that they did, and I got really interested. And in, uh, I'm a software person, but I got really interested, and I thought this is a great way to learn neural networks because. What this car is, is you can teach it to drive autonomously, and it uses a neural network to do that. Cool, so how does, it, how does that work with the electronics? Can you explain that? Sure. So this is a regular old RC that you can just buy online, right? This particular one um, is about $80 to $100. And then this is a Raspberry Pi, a $35 computer. It's a full Linux computer. And then there's one little other little chip that's easy to get, it's about $10. So you put all that together and what the car can do is use the Raspberry Pi to decide how fast to go and how much to turn. And the way it works is in two phases. The first phase is as a you drive it around as a person, right? And use like an Xbox controller or something like that, a PS4 controller, and you drive around the track a whole bunch of times. About 20 or 30 times a second, the Raspberry Pi will take a picture. And they don't remember what the inputs were from the Xbox controller like what the throttle was and what the steering was. So it gets three pieces of data 20 or 30 times a second. Picture of what it sees, and then what the human said the throttle and steering should be, right? So it's remembering what the human did. And then um, in the second phase, you take all those data points, and maybe you'll collect 10,000 to 30,000 data points. And then you'll feed them into a process to calculate a neural network. And then um, the neural network will look at all the pictures and their associated uh, throttle and steering. And it'll essentially calculate a function. So that if you hand it a picture, it will give you the throttle and steering that the human would have done, right? It's called behavioral cloning. It's a, it's a kind of a machine learning called behavioral cloning because the idea is it's trying to replicate human behavior. So now when you want it to race all by itself without you controlling it, then you put the software into a mode where it takes a picture, asks the neural network for throttle and steering, and then the Raspberry Pi puts the throttle and steering into the hardware. And now it's driving. It does 20 or 30 times a second. Instead of trying to remember what the human did, it tries to replicate what the human did. And now it's driving. That sounds like a lot of data uh, that it's collecting. And you layer it on top of each other. And then how do you how do you clean that up? What does it look like? Yeah, well, you often do need to clean it up. So Because when you're driving around the track, you're tr generally not the only person on the track. So we do um, four times a year, once a quarter, there's a race at a company called Circuit Launch in Oakland, California. For, this is for the San, San Francisco Bay chapter um, of DIY Robocars. And so people will show up and they all want to gather their data that they need to calculate their neural network. And so there might be five or six or seven cars on the track at one time. So sometimes there's crashes and sometimes you're just not that good a driver, right? So you get, end up with bad data and you don't want to train with bad data. The last race I went to, I had 30,000, about 30,000 uh, uh, pieces of data. And, and it, there's, a, there's a part of the donkey car uh, open source software is a little utility for you to look at that like a, like a movie, like a video, right? And find places where you did something you didn't like and select that section and delete it. So, but you, you know, I drove for half an hour. It takes a lot longer to watch that thing carefully and then back up and then it took me like two hours to actually remove the data, so remove it, the bad data. So it helps if you're a really good RC car driver to begin with? It, it helps if you're, real, as a matter of fact, I'm talking to a guy now who is an RC driver because I think he could drive a lot faster than me. And remember, it's behavioral cloning, right? We're, we're trying to replicate what a human can do. So if you have a really good human, that's the kind of human you want to replicate, not me. Cool, and how much did you know about electronics before get, getting into this? 
I knew um, nothing, absolutely nothing. And so when I first and when I first started um, doing this, I wanted to learn about the neural networks. And you can actually put this together without really any electronic knowledge. It's sort of almost plug and play. There's wires to put between the Raspberry Pi and what's what's called an ESC, an electronic speed controller, which is kind of standard part of an RC. And there's and there's detailed instructions in at, at donkeycar.com on how to do that. So I just followed the instructions and got it done. But I thought, you know, this is pretty interesting. And I started trying to learn more about what is an ESC. Um, you know, how does the how does the Raspberry Pi actually talk to it, like through those wires? And um, I ended up getting into uh, a lot more electronics, and now I can build things with Arduino. And I I built a robot at home that actually has a stepper motor and some time of flight sensors on it so it can map my whole house. It can drive around my house and map my whole house where all my furniture is. It's sort of like, that's what a Roomba does. It, it uses a little bit more expensive hardware than mine. Like I think I have $25 in parts or something to do the same thing. But um, I have never even have thought of doing that a year and a half ago. It, it was this project here that, that introduced me unexpectedly to electronics. And how did you, I mean, how do you find the resources to learn about this? Is there an active community that you meet with? Is it uh, online resources, YouTube videos? So donkeycar.com is, um, is a set of uh, documentation and instructions on how to take an RC, almost any RC. There's an online community on Slack, donkeycar.slack.com. Uh, where you can ask questions, lots of new people come and say, what kind of car do I buy? And, and, and Or, I was installing the software and I got this error message, what do I do? And there's an active set of people that are, are answering those questions every day. Sometimes a, a question will be asked and it will be answered within a minute. That's so cool because a lot of the communities like this don't have that kind of like instantaneous communication. People are kind of like silent. Yeah, and, and so DIY Robocars um, is an umbrella organization that um, had, brings together not just donkey car enthusiasts, but other people that build different kinds of autonomous vehicles from RCs and gets them to do this race thing. And then so at the last race, um, which I did not win, but at the last race, the table beside me was the winner. And so I talked to him and he had a, he had a car and he had this big thing on the top, and I'm like, is that LiDAR? He has LiDAR on his car, and he has this big computer board like they would use in a real autonomous vehicle. He had like a, he had one of these, but it's more like $3,000, and he came in first. He's a PhD student from um, University of California, San Diego, and he did an awesome job, and it was really interesting. It's a completely different way of solving the same problem. And then the table to the left of me were the people that came in second place, and there were two old retirement, retired gentlemen, and they just used an Arduino and a camera. And so their car was, and they did a line following algorithm, and their, their car was like $150. And they came in second, and the first place car was $3,000. So there's this tremendous dynamic range of what's possible. And I learned a lot from those guys who just had the line following, and I learned a lot from the gentleman that had the LiDAR solution. Do you find yourself just uh, like staring at room, uh, your Roomba, like watching it bump in the corners? And no, I, I want to take it apart is what I want to do. Like, how do they do that? I want to build one. These kind of projects are, are so great because even I learned all this new stuff that kind of sprung from it. And there's so much um, to sort of dig into here. And I see a lot of schools starting with projects like this, like build simple robots and use sophisticated software and, and teaching kids about uh, STEM and getting them interested. Because this project really is more, it's not really about winning the race. It's really about doing something fascinating with new technology and learning that new technology.